uh, team shuna started when a group of highly motivated students decided to participate in the solar decathlon it, which is an international competition organized by the us department of energy the challenge here was not only to design but also to build and operate a house we we can proudly say the team shunya was the only team from india to participate in this in this competition in 2014 and in 2018 achievements of the team include uh, uh, winning a hor uh, an honorable mention for sustainability in 2014 and the best participation award in the 2018 edition of the solar decathlon competition Uh, the pictures you see on screen are of the 2014 house it's a one story house uh, which we had assembled uh, at the competition site dismantled and then reassembled in iit bombay uh, once you're all back on campus uh, you could come and visit the house to know more about solar houses and energy efficient houses as a whole this is the 2018 house the challenges here were more we had to build a two story building and also charge an electric car next up are the components of the technical team uh, so we work with a lot of softwares and a lot of uh, different sections of the team focus on different things the architecture sub system is responsible for understanding user aspirations to develop the design and consider the aesthetics of the house the civil team uh, consists of the structural team that works on design aspects and the materials team that selects materials for the project the mechanical team maintains thermal comfort regulates heat air flow ventilation and air conditioning as well as the plumbing network of the house The electrical team meets the electrical requirements of the house, such as energy demands, wiring, and home appliances. And then there is the integration part, in which uh, a simulation of various systems is done after integration using uh, the various softwares that we've uh, mentioned in this slide. Uh, the most important part of uh, of actually building a house is in fact the construction and the rigorous safety training that uh, the team has to undergo so when we actually uh, build the house we do a lot of different kind of construction work and uh, you can see the pictures of the in process house as well as like the final product The second half of the team is the marketing and communications team uh, which carries out the which carries out various activities throughout the year um, we participate in various knowledge exchange activities interact with the industry persons we also organize various events like uh, such as webinars and workshops uh, also like this particular session and the other sessions we've had over the weekend we try to reach out to our audience through social media and um, we do this in various ways uh over the years we've received a lot of uh, attention and recognition from the media and we've interacted with various government officials scientists researchers uh, as well as uh, people in administrations and ministries uh building a house especially an energy efficient house is not possible uh without money and we are very grateful to our sponsors who have sponsored um us to, to participate in uh, the solar decathlon competition in 2018 as well as 2014 We are also very grateful to our faculty advisors and mentors who guide us through our projects without whom our achievements would not have been possible. And finally we have the team Shunya 2021 team uh for the Solar Decathlon Design Challenge uh that's happening next year. And that's it. This is uh this is what team Shunya is about. Thank you so much. Uh Yash, you can take over from here. and we can continue with the session hello can you be audible hello am i audible 
Am I audible now? Uh, yes, yes, you are. are. So hi guys, this is Yash and I'm the current Energy Club convener, convener and I'll be talking about how do we actually calculate energy consumption before we move on to efficiency techniques. So how I'll be framing my inter presentation is that first I'll be talking about why do we actually need to uh, care about our energy, energy consumption. Then we'll talk about how do we calculate our household consumption and then some problem statements that Team Sunya and our Energy Club has for you. Moving ahead. So, so for the past year, our electricity consumption has been at about 1 million gigawatt hour, out of which uh, 270,000 gigawatt hour is uh, 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 for our domestic, domestic uses. When we look at it from per household consumption, it averages to about 90 units, which even if we, uh, with our Mumbai tariff, comes out to about 500 rupees on, on maximum. But we have usually seen that our bills uh, reach north of 1000 uh, thousand rupees. So we'll look into why it happens and try to uh, reduce it. Secondly, there's also psychological behavior that's attached to it. For example, there's this case study where, we, where there were two houses. One had its electric meter behind the house and the other had its electric meter situated near the door where the, uh, where the uh, residents could actually see how much energy they consume. So um, one month pa one month passed. Uh, the energy consumed by uh, the meter which was placed at the house, uh, door, they had a significantly lesser uh, energy consumption as compared to the other one because every now and then the residents were actually reminded of how much energy they consume, and thus they need the monetary monetary benefits of it. Moving on to how do we actually calculate energy efficiency? So it's a fairly simple methodology. Uh, first, we need to tabulate whatever appliances we have. For example, here I've got your dummy ta uh, table, which mentions tube lights, ceiling fans, fridge, and whatnot. And uh, we uh, segment it into certain columns, right? So first is the watts consumed. Now watts consumed is simply, e uh, it's easy to get. Uh, it, is, it is mentioned on each appliance. For example, here you can see a Samsung adapter, which, uh, which consumes about 54 watts. And then we write how many number of appliances we have. For example, our house consumes four tubelets. So we write four tubelets. Then we then the total wattage, watts consumed by our tubelets becomes watts into number of uh, the tubelets we have. And um, depending on, uh, and how we calculate the energy consumed by tubelets is we multiply the num uh, number of uh, total watts which we are using into number of hours. Now, number of hours has a specific meaning in fridge and, uh, fridges and air conditioners, which I'll uh, cover up later. Uh, so this is the basic uh, methodology of how we go about it. To so, um, mention this more easily, I have prepared a dummy table for you. Yep. So here you can see I have uh, have had I had okay one okay. So I have these values. Uh, for example, the tube light consumes 20 watts. So I just tabulated it there. My house uh, or any other house has five tube lights. So you just tabulated it there. And then we have, for example, if you see the tube light uh, row, then we at the final uh, left, right hand side, we get the total energy consumed by the tubelet. Similarly, we go on for all other uh, appliances and we get a total per day consumption uh, of electricity. In fridges and air conditioners, there's a particular uh, difference. For example, they don't actually have their energy consumption mentioned, but rather their cooling capacity and the uh, uh, energy efficiency ratio. Now the stars you've seen on your fridges and air conditioners or any cooling appliances, they show how efficiently does it use the energy. Now these watts are actually calculated by a simple formula, which is cooling capacity by EER. Now EER stands for energy efficiency ratio. For uh, cooling capacity is basically uh, out of a given particular amount of air, how much heat can the device remove? That's uh, that's our cooling capacity. For example, in this particular um, example I've got you, uh, it. Um, it, um, its cooling capacity is almost 3840 watt, watts and since it's four stars, it stands for about four, uh, four, uh, its EER is four. So we get uh, about an uh, wattage of uh, 1100 watts. And there's also a 
term known as duty cycle. For example, if you are working a fridge for uh, 24 hours daily, so um, out of 24 hours, it doesn't actually work 24 hours. The compressor, its compressor, which actually removes the heat, works a lesser time than than it actually does. For example, this duty cycle here, we have 30 years, 30 percent. For example, 30 uh, percent as in out of 24 hours, only 30 percent of it will be used up to uh, compress uh, compress the heat. Uh, and thus, 20, uh, out of 24 hours, it adds up to eight hours of usage, which gives us about 200, 200 watts of watt hours of consumption. Now, uh, since we got a daily consumption of 13.4 kilowatt hour, a monthly consumption becomes 402 kilowatt hour, which is significantly higher from our 90 kilowatt hour average. Now, one kilowatt hour unit is one kilowatt hour is one unit. So, thus, we have our monthly consumption at 402.3 units. Which is what we see on our, in our meter. So now moving ahead to the actually actual billing part of it. So this is our usual Adani electricity bill which we get in a Mumbai apartment. Um, I've boxed out the consumption part. So and this is the tariff for our Mumbai uh, appliances. Now as you increase your appliance, as you increase your consumption the uh, waiting uh, the charges also increase because the more you increase uh, the more you continue electricity the more energy efficient you are not or the less energy efficient you are and thus they cost you more so for example we got our, our consumption at 402.3 units so for every 0 to 100 every range of 0 to 100 watts what are consumed we uh, they bill it at about 3 rupees Similarly, from uh, 101 to 300, they bill it about 6.02 rupees, and then for uh, till 500, it's 7.14 rupees. And they also have the fixed charges for connection. For example, from 0 to 100, it becomes 65, uh, 65 rupees, and from 101 to 300, it becomes 105 rupees. And then our net bill billing comes out to be about 2 to 3 uh, 2000 rupees. So that's high from what we actually seen. So this is why we actually uh, this this is what gives us the indication that we actually need to take a look about how we consume our energy and where we can uh, make it lesser. So we have done with uh, that. So now uh, simple tips to reduce our uh, our housing consumption is that we replace uh, our existing models with some energy efficient models. For example, we can uh, for example LEDs and CFLs are more efficient than the usual tube lights, uh, cathode, ray tube, uh, cathode tube lights. Now, also in fans, we have new DLDC motors coming up, which are way efficient than the usual induction motor fans. Similarly, we can use energy intensive appliances, as I said, and also it becomes more inherent to ourselves that we start using lesser and uh, lesser electricity and become, we become more vigilant about it. After that, we, ha we had this problem statements prepared for you. Uh, uh, there are three problem statements uh, uh, from our side, which we'll be asking you to do. And you'll be giving us the solutions uh, through Google Forms. And then um, the three top writers will be uh, shortlisted and uh, showcased on our Insta handle. So these are the three problem statements. The first problem statement uh, uh, the first problem statement can, uh, show, showcases how the, the disparity between a US flat and an Indian flat, how much energy it consumes. The second talks about a rural and an urban household in India. And the third talks about a flat and a bungalow, um, bungalow's consumption. So you'll be uh, filling out any of the two statements uh, from above, and you'll be filling the Google Forms to us. So thank you for that. Yeah, thank you, Yash. Uh, so the uh, problem statements Google form uh, will be entered in the chat box in uh, two, three minutes. And now uh, moving on, uh, we uh, Ankush, a PhD research scholar member of Team Shunya, will be speaking on the mechanical point of view of uh, efficiency techniques. So over to you, Ankush. Yeah, uh, am I audible now? Yes. And my PPT is visible? Yes, it's visible. Yeah. So uh, welcome all of you. And uh, in continuation to H, uh, what Yash has explained, 
that if, uh, if we are consuming energy more efficiently, we will get less bill, uh, less bill, and simultaneously we will be more efficient in cost, in the way of cost as well as in the way of sustainability. So, how can we reduce these energy consumptions in our house? So, team should now work on that particular thing to reduce the energy consumption in a house and we will try to expl explain some of concepts from team shunya's work so uh, the content of my presentation uh, not a uh, uh, presentation by me alone me and renuka will be the energy consumption in heating and cooling loads which are the basically important loads in our house uh, second reducing the uh, these important loads heating and cooling loads and then we will try to uh, explain some methods, renewable and new methods, which are uh, currently available in market to reduce these loads or to uh, replace these loads by more efficient way. So first is energy consumption in heating and cooling. So where we required heat in our house and where we required the cooling in our house. So this slide explains the some of these concepts so where we required the cooling in case of cooling if we say uh, whatever be the energy uh, heat energy inputs to the house or the do room that will increase the temperature of the room and as we know for a uh, normal human uh, to maintain the productivity we required the temperature nearly equal to 24 degrees celsius and if you have to maintain the temperature of the room we have to extract the added heat from the room itself so how uh, what are the ways through which heat can be added or heat gets added to the room so most important part is the external part and second part is internal heat sources so in external part the main source is solar energy so solar energy or solar radiations which falls on the roof or the walls will go, will get absorbed by the roof and walls and this heat energy will obviously get conducted or and convected to the internal room and that will cause the increase in temperature of the room and to maintain the temperature we will have to extract that particular heat uh, next part is in uh, direct solar radiations through various op openings in the walls these are uh, from architectural point of view these openings are called as fenestrations or the windows or doors and the solar radiation which is directly coming from these openings are the important source of such heat and the third important part is infiltration infiltration is the uh, energy which is carried out carried in by the uh, flowing air which is passes through the cracks in between the walls or the between the windows so that kind of energies are uh, added from the external sources and if you consider the internal sources uh, so there are various devices running like uh, lights uh, electronics computers tvs and those will cause the uh, heat addition to the room uh, so those kind of loads are called as sensible loads and there there is second kind of load which are uh, not only adding the temperature rise but also adds the moisture rise in the room and in case of uh, climate uh, moist climate like Mumbai, we will have to consider that particular part as a, also importantly. So those are like uh, human respiration, the steam generation de generating devices, those add the moisture as, as well. So we have to remove moisture as well as temperature or heat we can say. And next part is what are the heating loads or where we require the heating in our house. So most important heating load is in the cold climates where we will have to maintain the higher temperature uh, as compared to outside temperature where the outside temperature may the falls down below sub-zero temperatures also uh, so that is one important heat load uh, heating load next is domestic hot water requirement uh, throughout uh, india uh, whichever may be the climatic condition it is the domestic hot water requirement is there and from the uh, various clauses of uh, uh, green building constructions we will have to supply at least 20 liters of hot water per person per day in a house so that kind of hot water requirement is generally expected in a house next here heat requirement is for the cooking and that cannot be eliminated so these are the heating and cooling load requirement which we have to tackle now 
how can we tackle these particular loads so first way is to reduce this particular heating and cooling loads and second will be uh, by changing the uh, by changing these particular things uh, loads towards the renewable technologies so first we will see how we can reduce the heating and cooling loads by passive techniques or optimum utilization of devices one of the way one of the way uh, is explained by the ash that we can use more efficient or more devices which have uh, higher star ratings energy efficiency rating that is the most important way but there are other ways also so we will see one by one so first is passive technologies so what is pass passive technologies if we see passive means uh, something which does not add any additional work requires any additional work so from this we can say that passive technologies are the technologies which can maintain the required temperature in our house without any additional work input from electrical devices or from mechanical devices so how can this can how this can be happen or how this can be achieved so most important part is building orientation by just changing a building orientation by couple, uh, by some angle we can reduce the amount of solar radiation falling on the walls or the roofs and that can increase or decrease the solar radiation in case of uh, cold climates we will have to maintain the orientation in such a way that we will have uh, in such a way that am i audible yes someone yeah so in cold climates we will have to maintain the orientation in such a way that we will get maximum solar radiation so that uh, the heat requirement can be reduced and in case of hot climate we will have to maintain the orientation such that we will reduce the solar radiation and will reduce the cold uh, cool, cooling requirements next is roof extensions which are mentioned in this particular sustainable sunday uh, poster by team shunya which are uh, such kind of posters are posted by team shunya on various media platforms so here what we are doing is that we will increase the roof extension by uh, some angle and that will cause the shadow on the windows that shadow will be uh, 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 that particular extension will shadow the windows during the high sun time means in the uh, evening or we can say in the summer time but in the morning or in the winter time these uh, in extensions will allow the solar radiation to enter in the house so that way we can uh, allow sun when it is needed and we can block the sun when it is not needed so that kind of passive techniques can be adopted in a house next is cross ventilation or natural ventilation it is a simple way like if our ac is switched off or fans are not working we will just open the windows and that particular flow of air will maintain the air temperature uh, to required required conditions so that is the one way easiest way to maintain the cooling to reduce the cooling requirement in a house next is there are various advanced technologies in the building construction itself like uh, there are some insulating materials which are used in the walls we can add those insulating materials and that will reduce the heat loss from house to environment or from rivers environment to the house and that can reduce our requirement for heating or cooling that can be incorporated in the building construction itself next way is energy efficient window glasses uh, as we say so direct solar radiation from windows is also one of the important cause for so uh, heating load so if we are using the double glaze or triple glaze gla glasses which are just instead of single layer two or three layers of glass with some vacant space in between that will reduce uh, increase the uh, re resistance to the heat transfer and that will reduce our heat requirement or the cooling requirement next is cool roof paint or uh, coatings that is also one innovative idea uh, which on which there are uh, tremendous research is going on and this is actually practically implemented in some of the cities in rajasthan and gujarat as well so this kind of paints what they do is that they will reflect the maximum amount of solar energy from the roof and uh, reduce the amount of energy absorbed by the roof or the walls and that way we can reduce the cooling requirement uh we will e explain this particular technology in details in the upcoming slides uh might be renuka will explain it 
next part is optimum use of devices so uh, what is optimum use the optimum use means we can operate the devices at maximum possible efficiency if we see that particular labels uh, energy efficiency levels those will men mention some values of operating conditions if we meant operate these particular devices at that particular conditions those will give the maximum efficiency like our acs or the refrigerator acs take example of acs uh, operate if we have operate them at 27 degrees celsius they will work with maximum efficiency and if we reduce the temperature to the 18 degrees celsius that will operate with uh, lower efficiency so one can say by reducing the temperature we are uh, reducing the time required for cooling but we are reducing the efficiency of the cooling as well even though we are maintaining the same cooling effect we are doing that particular thing at lower efficiency and lowering the efficiency means we will have to add more energy for the same cooling effect so that if you cool something at 27 degree celsius that will be more efficient similarly in case of refrigerator if we try to create the ice or freeze something in just uh, minutes 30 minutes or 45 minutes that will consume more if more energy because that will be less efficient instead of that if you do that particular thing in number of hours that will be more efficient way and that will consume the less amount of energy so that particular things has to be taken care while operating any devices electrical devices next part is energy efficiency of appliances as explained by ash the energy ratings are available on the devices but if we see normally the market higher efficiency means higher cost that is the uh, normal way we think think about but if we see the long term cost of this particular devices we can conclude that the energy saving by higher uh, efficiency will be the more than what we are paying for this particular device so using high rating devices are the uh, one of the important way to reduce the energy consumption and next is using the recently rated appliances if you are using the five star device rated in the 2020 and if you are using five star rated device rated in 2018 there will be at least 50% energy reduction energy consumption difference in between these two devices so most recently rated devices will be more efficient and highly rated so that is most important part while considering the power savings by the energy ratings and these are the all technologies or all things which we can incorporate by our uh, day to day life by just changing something but there are some technologies also which are some uh, which required some additional cost uh, and by that we can work on it so renuka renuka will explain about those in details like renewable and new methods for heating and cooling renuka hello am i audible yes you are audible uh, renuka i think uh, she is not in the meet okay so no issues uh, i will continue with the same yeah okay i'll so try is there contacting any... her and uh, you can continue and then i'll try contacting her and see if she, like what happened yeah yeah and uh, is there any time issues means uh, how much time there is remaining we, i will take just 10 minutes more if allowed uh yeah that's there's fine. no yeah that's fine yeah so first is solar thermal uh the most important heating requirement in our house is for hot water requirement or the cooking requirement the solar thermal is the way in which we can uh, replace this particular heating requirement and the solar thermal solar cooker is uh, uh, is one way where in uh, is the thing in which we can uh, replace the cooking technology or cooking requirement so here i have tried to mention the commercial part of the solar cookers because we don't think that uh, solar cookers are that much commercial commercially feasible so they are feasible means if we are uh, using them very frequently the cost of uh, solar cookers can be recovered in couple of years and those will after that those will be free of cost so that kind of free energy which we are uh, which is available in the mark uh, in the 
uh, our backend and we can use it whenever we want and the next part is it doesn't require any much innovations as well like this particular parvati cooker which is mentioned here that is developed by a house uh, by a couple in pune uh, who is not that much educated in engineering background but from the household uh, material they have created their solar cookers and that can create temperature up to 250 degrees celsius as well and that to in uh, lower cost so these kind of devices are available which we can use so in my uh, all markets indian market as well as international market next is solar thermal and uh, solar thermal for solar water heating as we see that if we are considering 20 liters of uh, hot water requirement per person per day if there are five person in a house there will be 100 liter of uh, water require a uh, hot water requirement per person per day so if we see the cost of 100 uh, 100 liters solar water heater it is something like 15000 and if you see the energy savings throughout uh, 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 energy saving for the heating water requirement that can be recovered that cost can be recovered in couple uh, ranging from couple of years to the 10 years as well like in the uh, some cities in india where the solar radiation is much less in that case we will require more number of years but there are some cities like some regions like gujarat rajasthan maharashtra delhi those parts where there is abundant amount of solar energy and solar days are available in that case we will not require any additional heating heating uh, water requirement so that way we can recover this cost of solar water heaters in couple of years like here we can say here is uh, the for delhi it is 3.9 years and for pune it is nearly four years so that will be recovered after that it will be free of cost and the lifespan of the such water heaters are ranging from 10 years to 20 years that will depend upon the manufacturers and technology which we have used but that will be free of cost after for first four years it will be free of cost for the remaining all years and there are much uh, detailed commercial studies available which we can uh, you can go through from the references if someone needs more technical details and commercial details as well next is what are the uh, these are the cooling te heating technologies but what about the cooling can we replace the cooling with more efficient way so yes there are some solar pv refrigeration technologies which are available but they mainly use the solar pv panels and use that particular generated electricity to run our regular ac or refrigerator so that kind of normal innovation is adopted there and that will reduce your electricity bill and next way is solar thermal refrigeration it is widely used in the commercial or industrial market right now but in domestic market this technology is getting developed slowly but one day we can hope that this particular solar thermal refrigeration technology will be available for domestic small scale market as well and that will be the uh, more efficient and cost efficient way we can say as compared to solar pv refrigeration because the requirement of cost is the solar pv panel solar pv panels are re removed then the cost will be reduced and that will be the more cost effective way the more cost effective way and the practical way available for cooling right now is the evaporative cooling technologies if we are uh, living in the uh, hot and dry climates like rajasthan and gujarat or some of the cities from mp then we can uh, experience that during the summer time uh, by uh, with reducing the uh, temperature we also have to add some moisture in the air due to this the availability of less moisture there are some issues skin issues uh, skin diseases also there so to maintain this moisture requirement and temperature requirement both can be done with the help of evaporative cooling technologies and there are number of commercially available uh, domestic as well as industrial evaporative cooling technologies which can be used or which can be accommodated in our house that will reduce your requirement uh, energy electricity requirement as well as that will be the more sustainable way of cooling in hot and dry climate zones 
next is radiative cooling technology as uh, explained um, by me in the free waste section radiative cooling is the more developing technology uh, we just see that uh, we can put the reflective uh, coats uh, paints on the roof but there are some paints or the some techniques or some panels are available which can cool the temp cool the uh, water or cool the air below atmospheric temperature as well with the help of radiative cooling in that particular case what they do is that instead of receiving the radiative energy they will emit the low temperature uh, low wavelength emissions from the panel itself and due to that emission the temperature will keep on dropping and that technology is easily uh, adoptable in the um, uh, climates where there is clean sky uh so that kind of technologies are in development and are more energy efficient and can be adopted in the house to reduce the cooling requirements uh so these are the some of the technologies which on which team shunya is working and for such more technologies we are uh, we are we keep posting such posters like sustainable sunday posters on our uh, media platforms so just go through them and uh, we are working on such technologies if someone wants to uh, col uh, collaborate on such technologies you are welcome or we can discuss on those things uh yash will you like to explain this point here itself or we can explain it in post discussion session so uh, i have mentioned these public statements i wanted to bring them up here to actually uh, remember uh, get the guys to remember that you can submit them again okay so guys if someone is interested uh, uh, interested in this particular statements you are welcome to post the thing uh, post the, your proposals on the uh, energy group uh, mail id of energy uh, club or the uh, form which is submitted presented by the energy club and uh, quite interesting activity if someone wants to participate and here are the details other details if someone needs akshada you can take care. take over am i audible yes you are uh, so uh, you had presented a uh, renoka slides right 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 okay so uh, i think we are done with the uh, speaking uh, speaker session part now uh, coming to the question and answers uh, so there uh, there are a few questions that have been submitted just a one minute yeah uh, can someone share uh, their screen so that i can just yeah you can stop sharing yeah thank you okay so uh, coming to the questions that have been uh, submitted in the google form for uh, used for registering so uh, there is one question how do we estimate the energy savings of passive cooling systems like earth contact and wind towers okay yeah yeah so actually passive cooling technologies are adopted uh, during the construction itself means while calculating the energy saving by passive technologies uh, we will have to check the energy reduction not uh, the actual energy consumption and after that how much amount of cooling we are providing for that particular technology that cannot be adopted what way we have studied is that Uh, we will first calculate the energy consumption for normal building then we will apply some passive technologies to that particular building and then we will again calculate the energy consumption for that particular building so there are softwares available where we can do such modifications passive technological modifications in our building and calculate the energy consumption throughout the year and that can be done so okay. there are Uh, methods or softwares which can be used but that will be a detailed session uh, which can be conducted by someone who is expert in that particular thing okay that is used in architectural point of view yeah oh, okay 
and uh, the second question is uh, do energy conservation at home and smart homes go hand in hand and if yes then how uh, what the uh, if uh, who has asked that particular question uh, he can explain what he mean by smart homes that will be helpful uh, okay yeah if uh, there is no one so i will just continue if uh, he is talking or he or she is talking smart home means homes means the uh, homes which are adopting the smart technologies smart devices which are used so that is possible means smart devices using smart devices in the house that will be the more energy efficient way like if you are having a smart fan or smart uh, plugs smart lights which are uh, which can sense your present there are smart acs as well which can sense your presence and those will reduce the energy consumption based on your presence so just a uh, couple of days ago i have seen one advertisement where there is ac which will adjust their capacity from 1 ton to 3 t uh, 3 tons depending upon the uh, uh, number of persons present in the room so that kind of technologies are uh really helpful in the energy efficiency kind of things okay and uh, a question from uh, madhu ganda kor hai is what kind of passive techniques should be used in a city like mumbai yeah so actually i am from mechanical point of view so this question can be better answered by a architectural person so i will not comment uh, not that much confident about commenting on this question so just yeah yeah that's fine uh, and the last question how to determine the parameters in energy usage uh parameters means like uh, measurement parameters i'm guessing yeah as ash explained that if you are you are calculating the energy consumption of house you will just have to check the uh, the wattage of particular device and the time required for uh, running that particular device that can be uh, easily available on that particular device and using this particular two parameters we can calculate the energy consumption by that device or the simplest way is by looking at our uh, energy meter so our energy meter will give our uh, give us number of different parameters like how much amount of load is connected to the uh, that particular load is connected in that particular house what is the total current flowing what is the uh, actual voltage at that particular point those kind of parameters are available in our energy meters which are uh, connected by our distribution company so that, those parameters can be done but for detailed study there are different energy meters which are available which energy auditors use in large scale but in small scale those kind of devices or those parameters are not needed at much yeah okay so yeah. uh yeah i think that's the end of all the questions and uh, renuka actually had some network connection problem so she couldn't uh, join the meet but it's okay you covered up everything and uh, yeah so yeah. it was a great session uh, we got to know all about how to calculate the residential consumption of energy as well as uh, the mechanical and electrical points of view to uh, improve the efficiency and uh, yeah so it was very interesting uh, topic and as uh, for us engineers as well like it is a great topic to like uh, think about and we uh, think on ways to improve the efficiency of houses so uh, i thank all of the speakers for uh, giving their time and uh, speaking on the topic and yeah if anybody has any further questions they can uh, reach out to the speakers yeah so yeah is that all ankush yeah from our side it is fine okay if someone has questions he can post in the chat box or he can go through the our uh, team shunya or energy club uh, can reach out to team shunya or energy club by various ways and he can 
ask any questions or doubts or how to interact with team shunya or energy club you are always welcome all of them yes so it will be an interesting activity to participate in yeah and the problem statements uh, yeah. have been provided in the google form itself which is in the chat box so uh, any uh, the people who are interested can uh, fill them in and yeah it's a nice activity to uh, get to know how different situations are compared so yeah uh, i think that's all uh, thank thank you to all the participants for joining uh, yeah and i'll end the meet now thank you yeah thank you